joined by Daniel G, who we've had on before, talking about sports law, uh, his excellent book, Done Deal. And he's written a new book, um, which is called Build the Invisible, Practical Ideas for Achieving Your Dream Career. And when he told me about this, I thought, I very much want to interview Daniel about this. And the reason why is because a lot of people think, for instance, that I uh, and people at Saturday Anfield Rap have something of a dream career. And there's days where it doesn't always feel like that, but there are days where we have to acknowledge it's an absolute pleasure and a privilege to get to do this. And Daniel's book is about him feeling as though he managed to get to where he got to and how it works. And there's a really important bit early in the book, Daniel, I mean, you can disagree if you want, where you say there is no magic formula, but this is good news. And I think that that's a really important thing to come. I think a lot of people sort of, in lots of ways, almost wish there was a magic formula, almost wish there was just one thing that if you could do, work out how to do it and press a button, everything would be different. And this book is very much about that there is no magic formula, that you have to change lots of small things and then hope that opportunity comes your way. And it just struck me as a really important point, this, there is no magic formula, but that is good news, not bad. No, thanks, Neil. And um, but this is actually um, uh, this is Anfield Rap exclusive, basically. Because this is the first time I'm actually speaking about the book. So you've got an really uh, excellent. Uh, <laughs> so um, yeah. So uh, firstly, thanks for having me on. And look, it's great that you you feel comfortable to talk about other stuff apart from footy sometimes, which is great. But the truth is that we've had loads of conversations around exactly that, which is on the surface and externally people see this whole thing, which is oh, Neil's doing the thing that you you know everyone wants to do, which is talk about Liverpool. Daniel's doing the cool transfer and he's, you know, working with loads of cool players and that's exactly what I want to do. But what they don't see, and maybe we can have this conversation again between the two of us now, which is they don't see, I, I won't swear, but all the, the difficult stuff that goes on in between. They don't see what happened in order to start the Anfield Rap and all of the intricacies and the boring and the monotony of all the other stuff that happens. And they didn't see in the same way. I do a story in the book about how you know, for 10 years, I wasn't a football lawyer. I wasn't even a sports lawyer. I was an agriculture, auto parts and financial services lawyer, which definitely doesn't sound as interesting as a football lawyer. And the whole point about the book, as you said, is actually to try and give people a little bit of um, encouragement sometimes that firstly, it's not going to be easy or straightforward. Yeah. But it, like, I think everyone goes, same to you, I'm sure. Dan, just tell me the magic formula and I'll just copy it. And the truth is, is that what I tried to do with the book is to almost turn it on its head and say, well, that doesn't that doesn't work. But what does work are these quite specific, practical steps to get you to where you want to get to. It's it, what you mentioned there about being an agricultural lawyer. And people often sort of say to me, what did you do before you did this? And I, I, I produced a feature film on the one hand, but I did a lot of other jobs and I ended up doing spending a few years in shipping. And one of the things that I always try to sort of make a point I sort of try to make to people is the shipping stuff has been as useful, if not more useful, than the producing the feature film stuff. So you mentioned there being an agriculture lawyer. And I, I think that there's, again, people, you know, may think there's like, there's a new dawn, there's a new day, and then you're a new person. But you're actually, you know, one of the things that I think really matters and helps is being able to take all of your experiences and being able to work out what experiences you need for certain, but being able to take all of your experiences and, and understand why these are transferable skills. And for me, transferable skills is something which, no matter what age people are, I think it's something that firstly people sort of overlook the opportunity of transferable skills and then honing transferable skills as well. And, and that comes up repeatedly within the book. Well, the thing that I, I is probably my biggest takeaway that I learned from loads of people when I was speaking to them as well, which was basically th th there's a massive part which patience plays in all of this. And there's also a massive part, which is things don't have to happen in the short term for them to happen in the long term. So exactly to your point, like I was reading agriculture and vegetable regulations. I was reading car park cases. I was doing I was working on shipping cases, Neil, as well, in truth. So we're we're not too far aligned. All <laughs> in truth. But the thing that got me looking back in hindsight was all of those skills, if it was dealing with difficult clients, writing an important email, responding quickly, working hard, getting in late, leaving, leaving, sorry, getting in early and leaving late. And all of those types of, um, you know, building blocks stood me in really good stead. And the other thing as well, which I think, you know, it's difficult to say to younger generations or other, it would have been very difficult for me to say to myself 10, 15 years ago, is sort of patience is the key because you don't have to be in your ideal job in the short to medium term 
to work out how to get there in the longer term. And for me, that's definitely been the case doing all of this other types of law in order to get me to where I want to. So I give just a brief example in the book, which is like, well, you want to become the best football marketing or comms football comms expert in the world. You don't need to start in football. You certainly don't need to start in sport. Be the best marketing person you can be. Go and do campaigns and work with all the top people of brands across Europe, across the world. And then make the industry, which is football or sport, want you more than you need the industry. And I think that was almost important thing is like you will then show by your skills and experience the stuff that you can ultimately do. As part of that, I thought I think there's a really interesting phrase, uh, phrase that you use. It's, uh, you mentioned it's used by uh, a, a woman called Sam Miller mm. around opportunity chains. Mm. And that is something which I think is you know again for for people it's it's it brilliantly sort of framed within the book you end up sort of talking about thomas Cronemark as well in the same section but the idea of that ultimately opportunities splinter and you have to sort of follow at times some that you may not entirely be a hundred percent if you'd want to follow to end up in ones in places that you might want to be mm. and you know you the book where it's you know it's obviously sort of about people and, and the way in which they view their careers but to me, it's it's also you very much sort of it's about how people can want and change the nature of who they are, and by doing small incremental but consistent steps can make those changes. And part of that is, for instance, finding ways to be more open, more into the idea of saying yes to things because you never know where a series of yeses might lead. And I think it's a fascinating phrase, opportunity chains. No, thanks, Neil. And it, it's actually funny to. Uh, do an interview and obviously this is novel for the first time with someone repeating back the things that I've <laughs> said for so long but yeah if we take that opportunity change point and um, look I, I think everybody sometimes myself included thinks in very straight lines don't we it's like if we do this then this will happen and if we do this then the next thing in the chain the chain will happen whereas what I was trying to have conversations with people around is sometimes you can't you don't know what's beyond the corner you don't know what's beyond the choice that you don't understand you don't you know it's almost like matrix stuff isn't it really it's like you don't necessarily know what will happen if a conversation happens and how that splinters into loads of different ways and so my view on all of that was almost like put yourself in the position to create the maximum amount of opportunities in every situation and you do that by just generally speaking to a lot of people and i give quite a lot of ideas and ways about how to do that but if you can do that what then ends up happening is let's just say you want to be in fashion or music or TV or film or football, for example, or sport. The side hustle is going to be your knowledge. You're always going to be reading the footy news. You're always going to be trying to understand what's going on with the financials. You're always going to be understand, you know, what's going on with ownership issues. That was like the point of done deal in a way. That was my sort of knowledge side hustle. But when you mix your knowledge side hustle with that opportunity framework, with that like, right, who am I going to meet? Who can I speak to? Who can I say interesting things to? Who's going to say interesting things to me? Those things, as I said, just create that big opportunity wave. And then you don't just go in one direction, but you go in 150 directions at the same time. With, within that, you've uh, it's interesting you talk about when you talk about writing done deal and you talk about how you know your wife Holly was 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 important in amongst all of there. One of the ways in which and I I always sort of come back. There's not just a, from a, a question around writing, but in 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 lots of lots of things that you can do is you, you talk about the fact that you broke it down. So it wasn't you never had the anxiety of I've got I don't know fifty thousand more words to write or something like that. Instead, you had right we've got these things to do and they're, they're achievable in these in these small steps and you, you you a lot of the time and again you know around that around writing this book I'm sure you probably did something very similar indeed. But it isn't that isn't just sort of applicable in the writing world. It's applicable sort of full stop is to find ways to 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 effectively create uh, bite size uh, sorts of developments rather yeah. than the idea of development as a massive whole. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. And um, I got this idea from, I completely plagiarized from um, a few different people, but there was this guy called BJ Fogg who did a brilliant TED talk that I listened to a while back. And I actually wrote about it in the book. And he basically said that he wanted to, um, you know, become fitter and uh, get on more muscle mass and to actually just improve his, the way he looked and the way he felt. And um, he tried everything from, you know, new gym memberships and blah, blah, blah. And everyone starts off well, but then it just deteriorates horribly like us humans are, because what we're really good at is being inspired, but we're really terrible at um, consistency. 
Um, so you have short bursts of um, intense um, inspiration mixed with then very poor levels of consistency as a result. And so what he basically said is that if you attach something that you already do to that new habit and then you you basically hook it on, you've got a much better chance of doing it. And the example he gave, which is a really odd one, but actually sort of stuck sticks really well, is he said every time he went to the toilet, um, he would then do two push ups after he flushed the chain every time. So if you compound that over a long period of time, that's obviously a lot of push ups or sit ups or whatever else he wanted to do. But the benefit was is that then after a while, the routine becomes ingrained to the thing that you already do. So, for example, it's like when I have my first cup of coffee for the day, I'm going to read the two newspaper articles that I want to do. Or before I have breakfast every day, I'm going to go and put my trainers out and go for a run. Um, so it's just those tiny, tiny, small things. And there's a couple of brilliant books that I quote in the book as well, in my book. But the, the, basic, the, basic, the basic presumption really is, is that you just do boring, consistent things over a long period of time. And that's like, it sounds terrible to say, but that, and that's definitely not going to be the soundbite for the book. <laughs> but, but that's the truth, isn't it? It's like, you know it as well, Neil, as much as I. It's like, how do you get up every day and do the thing when no one else is looking, when no one else is caring, that in 10 years will make a difference for you? Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I'm having to cover bits and pieces of, uh, of of Craig Hannon's work at the time we're recording this, and I've actually just got a list of things that I need to just make sure I do before I do anything else over the course of the day because it's stuff I, it's not familiar to me, but I need to just sort of check it on this stuff that Craig's asked me to check it on. So I just need to do them before I do anything else, and then I can move on and do do other bits and pieces. And I've I've been doing that all week, and it's uh, I think I actually might have almost parked off the idea from when I was reading the book to prepare for this conversation. I just thought, right, make sure you've got that written, and then you'll be able to go and you'll be, you'll then you'll then have done the things that Craig needs you to do and then you can get on with your stuff uh, and that's that, that that's all in there listen the book is called Build the Invisible Practical Ideas for Achieving Your Dream Career uh, really good to speak to Dan about it um, what triggered it in the first place before I ask you where people can get it from it was it, you were doing some uh, YouTube tutorials during uh, ju- ju- during the pandemic is that right? Yeah literally it started at lockdown where um, you know literally everybody was in weren't we I mean it feels like an age ago now but you know yeah. from March or April like you were at your house be outside for half an hour of the day for whatever two or three months and so you know we're busy I was busy with work but then at six o'clock every day I just had this idea of like for a month or two just like do a course on the footy industry or do a course about developing your career so it started there and it got really nice traction that loads of people tuned in to listen to me which I found quite odd in the first place um, and then it was like can I do anything with all of these transcripts and so I started thinking oh I could just put the transcripts and um, publish them basically but then sort of two years later it's uh, taken a little while and to be fair that's the journey that it takes isn't it for everyone it's like yeah. you learn about yourself in the journey and the prep and the routine and the doing and what doesn't work and then what does and then you um, and then you iterate and then you iterate again and then you hope people don't think it's rubbish there we are it isn't it's called build the invisible the practical ideas for achieving your dream career where should people get it from daniel so it's um hopefully about to be launched on amazon in the next couple of weeks but um the, the print books are going to be there for january and ebooks hopefully just before christmas time marvelous stuff uh we will we will link to it and daniel himself will push it and where we can where can people find you on social daniel so uh, uh, on Twitter, I am uh, Football Law. So that's the, the stuff I do, do on a day-to-day basis, which is talking about footy stuff. And um, yeah, I hope we can chat again soon. And then on all the other channels, it's just uh, on Instagram or LinkedIn. I'm actually on TikTok as well, Neil, although I'm not dancing or singing, you'll be pleased to know. Uh, I, I, I'm quite the opposite. Uh, I, would, I would encourage the dancing and singing. Uh, get, <laughs> check out Build the Invisible. Uh, he'll, he'll dance one step at a time, Daniel. That's the way in which it works. Practical ideas for achieving your dream career. Uh, do have a good long look at it.